Introduction to Neural Networks with Java, Class 5, Part 2. Welcome to Part 2. In this class session, we are going to see how to actually implement a genetic algorithm in code. We will see the classes used to implement it. We will see how we perform the mating prop, uh, operation as well as mutation. And we will see how we actually calculate the scores that allow us to rank the various organisms and determine who is allowed to mate. We continue now and begin looking at the implementation for the genetic algorithm. The genetic algorithm base class does not provide too much functionality. Most functionality is implemented by the implementing classes of the genetic algorithm. For example, the one that will be used for the traveling salesman and also the one that will be used for the neural network. However, the mate function is provided. This does the basic crossover. You call the mate function on the mother chromosome and you pass in a father. You also pass in two offspring chromosomes. The offspring chromosomes will be copied over by a pairing between the mother and the father. The mate function handles all of the crossover processing. It also handles mutation. Depending on how much you have set the the genetic algorithm to perform mutations, it will mutate the occasional chromosome and modify it as such. Let's look at how the generic mate function actually works. We can have a generic mate function because basically all we're processing is a stream of numbers, be it the traveling salesman or anything it is a stream of numbers and all streams of numbers for all the chromosomes are guaranteed to be of the same length. First we obtain the length, how many genes there are, how many numbers in the potential solution. Then we create two cut points. As you recall from the diagram showed in the previous part, the cut points will basically allow us to cut the mother and father chromosomes into three distinct pieces. The offspring will then be made up of the genetic material between the two cut points that create the three distinct pieces. The rest of the code in the mate function will assemble these in the correct fashion. As we prepare to assemble the two offspring, we create taken one and taken two. These sets allow us to ensure that a gene is not repeated if in fact we don't want it repeated. For example, if we're doing something like the traveling salesman where we're going through a fixed number of cities, we don't want the splicing to cause us to repeat two cities. This would be completely inefficient if the traveling salesman went to two cities. Further, he would not make it to all of the cities. Now with a with a neural network where the the genes are going to just be individual rows and columns from the weight matrix, it's perfectly acceptable to repeat numbers because neural networks will often repeat weights throughout their weight matrix. The taken one and two simply allow genetic algorithms where you do not want repeats to keep track of which individual numbers have been taken. Now we're actually ready to cut the two parents and create the genetic material that's going to be used for the child offspring. Notice the loop that you see here. We're looping over the entire gene length. However, we're not going to process everything over the gene length. You'll see that we are only processing if i is less than cut point 1 or greater than cut point 2. Basically, we're processing the left and right side of the chromosome. You can see that we are filling in offspring 1 and offspring 2 in the middle of the for loop with the values from the mother and the father. The mother is represented by this, the current object. We also update taken 1 and taken 2 so that we can keep track of which values have already been used. This will allow later code to actually prevent numbers from being repeated as the cut is done. Next, we process the remaining genetic material. You'll notice in the loop that we check the prevent repeat. If we are not supposed to repeat, then we need to 
called the get not taken, which is basically going to make sure that we're not repeating something. If we are repeating something, then a suitable substitute is found. Otherwise, we drop down to the else clause and we process this gene exactly as we processed it in the previous um, for loop. Now that the genetic material has been copied, we should calculate the cost. We need to calculate the cost for offspring 1 and offspring 2. The exact method by which we calculate the cost varies greatly depending on what it is we're trying to do. For the traveling salesman problem, the cost is the overall length that the, tra that the salesman has had to travel because we want to minimize this length. For neural networks, this is the error for the neural network across the training set. If it's something like tic-tac-toe, like we're going to see later, the calculate cost is going to be some number that indicates whether we won, lost, or it was a draw. This allows the life forms to be sorted in such a way so that we can discard the life forms that did not have that good of a solution and will not be used for further mating. Mutation may be necessary. Mutation is completely random to determine whether we should do it or not, and we determine a percentage that we check to, as to what percentage of the offsprings we want mutated. Here we check to the random numbers that we generate, and we compare the random numbers against the mutation percentage to see if we want to mutate. If we do want to mutate, we call the mutate function. This is done for both offspring 1 and offspring 2. Mutation is very necessary. The mutation function is implemented by the class that actually defines the, the operation that we're going to do with neural networks. The way we mutate is very different for traveling salesmen versus neural networks. For the traveling salesman, we're going to mutate by swapping a couple of cities. For neural networks, we're going to mutate by randomly changing the weight matrix. You saw how the mate function works. This mate function provides the crossover and the mutation necessary for each iteration of a genetic algorithm. There are other functions that are necessary as well. However, they are defined by the classes that implement the genetic algorithm base class. We will look at those in the later parts of this class session as we see how the genetic algorithm can be applied to the traveling salesman problem, neural network training, and also how to create a neural network for something such as the tic-tac-toe game. We will continue in the next part by looking at these. This concludes part two. In the next part, you will learn how to apply the classes that we just developed to solving the traveling salesman problem. We hope you will continue with part three. Thank you. This course is based on our Introduction to Neural Network Programming books for Java and also Introduction to Neural Networks for C Sharp. Available in both paperback and ebook format.